This is a short clip about the basic interpretation of a non-enhanced CT examination of the brain. This is one of the most common exams you're going to see. And uh, you're going to notice that we will interpret this study in different windows. Every window shows us a different structure. This is very important in interpretation of any CT examination, but most important probably in the interpretation of a CT scan of the brain. The first window is called the parenchymal window, which we need to evaluate the gray and white matter. So the gray matter is this gyriform high signal. And the white matter is the underlying slightly darker as density on the CT. What you want to make sure is that the gray white matter is preserved. The differentiation between the gray and white matter is, is preserved throughout the brain. Certain areas are more prone for this to be lost. For example, the subinsular cortex. You see the gray matter in the white matter, the gray matter in the white matter. And this is uh, often lost in middle cerebral artery infarcts. So in the setting of infarct, this is a very important area to evaluate. And you see that the gray white matter is noted throughout the brain parenchyma. Now, the second uh, thing to evaluate on this window is white matter abnormalities. And as you notice that the white matter is slightly darker than the gray matter, and it's symmetric on both sides. Above the ventricles, the white matter is called the centrum semi-ovale. At the level of the ventricles, it's called corona radiata. And then it merges into the internal capsule. This is a posterior limb, and this is an uh, anterior limb. White matter hypodensities are, or white matter abnormalities are difficult to pick up because they are usually dark, and the white matter itself is dark. So what you're looking for is an area of more darker signal or asymmetrically darker signal within the white matter from side to side. A third thing to interpret on this window is the subarachnoid space, and this is the space between the gyri, we're looking at the salsa. And like the ventricles, which are black, these salsi contain CSF and are black. So number one, you want to make sure that the salsi are present, and they're not effaced, which would be a sign of hyper intracranial hypertension, among other etiologies. The second is to make sure that they are CSF equivalent. So if you see higher density within these subarachnoid spaces, that's abnormal and that denotes hemorrhage. We can evaluate the ventricles on this window making sure that the lateral ventricles are of a similar size, that the interventricular septum is in the midline, which is a line drawn along the fox, and it's not shifted from right to left. Then we go and see the third ventricle, also in midline and not enlarged, and the cerebral aqueduct leading to the fourth ventricle, also in the midline and not enlarged. When we have hemorrhage in the ventricles, this manifest like any other acute hemorrhage as higher density and it's usually noted in the dependent portion of the ventricle which is the occipital horn now after you looked at the gray white matter differentiation and the white matter it's time to evaluate the basal ganglia which are deep white matter nuclei and you see them brighter in density the caudate the putamen and to evaluate the, uh, the thalamus which is along the lateral margin of the third ventricle You do the same for the cerebral hemisphere and the cerebellum. The cerebellum is usually more difficult to evaluate with a CT scan because streak artifacts from the skull base results in degradation of the image at that level. Now, once you're done with the, that window, you can switch to the soft window setting in which you can see the skin and the remainder of the soft tissues, for example, in the orbits. You're looking for any lesions, any areas of collection that you see probably with hematomas in the setting of trauma you're looking at the orbits the globes the lenses the fat planes and the surrounding muscles the third window we want to use is the bone window and when comparing the bone window the, to the brain parenchymal window you see that the bone is much well defined however you lose the visualization of the brain parenchyma so this would be the bone window and this would be the brain window or parenchymal window. And on the bone window, you see, uh, as we said, that the bones are sharp. So this is an excellent window for evaluation of fractures, as well as evaluation of uh, the sinuses. You, can, you have to see that the sinuses are clear. They have, they have air, which has a black density. And when you have sinus disease, you're going to have some soft tissue or fluid 
For example, this is the sphenoid sinus uh, showing abnormality. The sinuses are the maxillary sinuses, the ethmoid air cells, the frontal sinuses, and as we saw, the sphenoid sinuses, and don't forget the mastoid air cells. So again, this window is important for evaluation of fractures and evaluation of the sinuses. Now, finally, on the axial images, you want to ch uh, you go back to the parenchymal window, widen it a little bit. This makes visualization of extra axial spaces uh, easier. In this case, it is a normal study, so there's nothing to see. But in cases where you have subdural collections, even small subdural collections, they might become much more visible on a wider window. After you're done with the axial images, don't forget to review sagittal and coronal images if you have them available. The most important image on the sagittal view is the mid-sagittal cut, where you see the cella and the supracellular region, which are very poorly visualized on the axial images. You see the corpus callosum, and you see the tonsils of the cerebellum, and you want to make sure that the tonsils are not herniating, fear to the foramen magnum. You want to make sure that the pituitary gland is not bulging upwards and there are no lesions in the cellular or supracellular region that you may, might miss on the axial images and especially in pediatric patients you want to make sure that the corpus callosum is complete and does not have congenital abnormalities now if you have any other structure that or any other abnormality that you question on the axial images you may also uh, try to confirm this on the sagittal images